guys welcome back to my channel so on today's fossil friday episode we're going to be paraloiding up some massive chunks of some big ammonites so i'm going to show you them like that this is a heavy chunk like there is no way i could have carried this whole piece off the beach but i did find this lovely specimen if you like you can see the shell it's very fragile all over it but the detailing's there the ribs are there like it's a really stunning piece like can you see it all it's very hefty and look at that keel down the edge there like it's really really obvious and i do have geologically themed nails i don't know if you guys can see them we've got an ammonite on this one some footprints on these ones and this was meant to be a shell um didn't really go to plan and then my thumb has just a load of ammonites on it because of why not <laughs> i just got carried away playing around and i've got to say i'm actually quite chuffed with them so i'm happy with them and then on the back of this big boy, I say big boy, chances are this was a female because the larger ones were girls, but anyway, we won't get into that. You can see the suture lines. Can you see them there? So yeah, so it's a nice big piece, this one. So I thought it'd be nice to preserve in some paraloid and then it can just sit happily amongst my collection. I just think it's quite a nice piece. Like, they don't have to be whole ammonites to be something precious. So we're going to paraloid that one up. And then this one is a not so big piece, but it's just quite lovely. Like it just caught my eye and it is in two pieces, but I can hold them together. I'm just going to hide my face so you can actually look at it. But it's got lots of ribs on it. And I just thought that's a really nice piece as well to preserve in some paraloid. So I need to super glue this one first because wah, wah, wah. I don't actually remember this one breaking on the beach, but you know, there we go <laughs> it probably got broken in transit thinking about it but you can see again down the edge here the lovely keel of the ammonite so no i think they're going to turn out quite lovely like they're not whole pieces but they're still pieces that i would like to preserve so i'm going to flip you guys down actually before i do that i know i talk a lot I'm, i apologize how do you guys clean your hammers because i've got two i mean this is a new hammer i'm sure some of you remember but uh, it's now already getting rather rusty and through the walls. I even cleaned this after I first used it to try and like save it from the salt water if you like. I think it's the salt water that's doing that but I might be wrong. So I thought it'd be fun to experiment some ways on cleaning hammers because I'd love these to look really shiny again. So I'm going to do a little bit of research and I've already read up a little bit but I'm intrigued to know if you guys have any advice on how to get them looking sparkly again because I can do two different like tests. And, like dip them in different things until they come out sparkling clean but just how lovely is this hammer like best present ever just love it love it love it love it so that can be that will be for a different video but drop your advice down below so i can do some fun little hammer cleaning experiments if that's even a thing right let's flip you over excuse my lovely cup of tea i'm actually going to move that so i don't get you know bits of rock in it but here are the two pieces we're going to work on i'm going to start by gluing this one together just so that's out the way so i used up a lot of my super glue last week um that was a very very sad day but you win some and you lose some with fossils so i'm moving on i have kept it though <laughs> of course i have so i'm just super gluing this all up I've got to say the super glue's actually been really good I just got it off Amazon but it's done the trick for all the pieces so far that I've needed it I'm not going to super glue my fingers this time I literally had so much glue on my hands I even got it in my hair last week so we're not going to do that right we'll leave that one let's put the lid on that so I'm going to start on this piece, so I'm not actually going to do much brushing on it just because it's very fragile with its bits of shell on it and I want to keep those there. So I'm just going to paint the paraloid on top on this side and then I'll turn it over once it's dried. So I've already made a nice clean pot of paraloid up, so I'm just going to get painting. <laughs>
Okay, so that's one coat on this piece, so I'm just going to let that one dry. Now I'm going to put a thin coat on this one. So I've done my Paraloid a bit weaker this time as more of a varnish rather than a consolidant. Um, just kind of as a trial and error to see how it holds up. It went on very... it was a lot more runny than last time I made it, so maybe I should put a bit more in. But I'm going to see how this one dries, you know, try how the shell's feeling and then go from there. It might just need... It might be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to trial and error it, but let's paint this one. sides are now both pretty dry so I'm now going to move on to the side of this one and I'm just going to paraloid them all up and then I'll show you guys the finished product. Okay, so I've paraloided them all up. Definitely a thinner layer of paraloid than I would normally do. I just, I thought I was making the same consistency to be honest, but it, I think I put less of the plastic nodules in, and so it's a bit more of a varnish, but that's fine for these. I mean, I'll keep an eye on them, but as long as bits aren't falling off them, they still have a bit of a shine to them. So I mean, look how lovely that one's turned out. I think the shine has just really brought out the shell that is left on it. So you can take a look, and then down the side, I think even the back of it looks nice paraloided up. I decided to paraloid it just so you could see the sutures better up here, but um, I just kind of wanted it all one colour rather than some bits look wet and some bits not look wet, etc. But I think that, that is a really unusual piece. You know, and I quite, I love that it's, you know, just one tiny piece of what this ammonite would have been. Like, this would have been a humongous piece. Um, so the other bits are forever lost, but I managed to find that little chunk. And then this one has cleaned up like this. So again, I think it just adds a lovely little shine to the pieces. And it's all in one piece now. The super glue, you can't really see the crack down the front. Um, it's more obvious from the back, but I didn't paraloid up the back on this one. I've just done kind of the edge bit here and this bit. But then I also noticed down here, can you see all those suture lines? There's always lots of little hidden details in these pieces. And I just love, you know, actually properly looking at them. and. By, do, by prepping them, you find all the little hidden bits about them. It's like when you're prepping something and you find another ammonite within it or another fossil. It's always very exciting. But that's today's video. I just wanted to show you my chunks um, because I thought they were quite exciting. You know, you can find really cool fossils that aren't complete. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't have the most perfect ammonite. I still love the imperfect pieces, whether they're, you know, just a tiny piece or a massive piece so I just really like this one so I thought I would share and also my prep process for it so hopefully this one's gonna hold I mean I've got to say all the little pieces it doesn't feel fragile in my hands anymore like before I'd be worried about touching this but it, the paraloid has done its job so I'll keep an eye on it but if it needs a bit more I'm sure I could put another layer on so um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe my Instagram will be down below if you'd like to check that out but yeah, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.